Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, June 3rd. I'm Stephanie Haney. This is 3 News Now, your early update with everything that's topping WKYC.com and our WKYC app. We'll get right into all of the top headlines that are covering Northeast Ohio. First, let's start with something that took over social media yesterday. I'm talking about the Blackout Tuesday campaign. This started as a music industry initiative, and the idea behind that were for music professionals to take a day to pause, to listen, to learn, to do things, to help fight racial injustice and those kinds of things. It was started by two black women, Jamila Thomas and Brianna A.G. Mang. That's according to the show mustbepaused.com. And then it transformed into a social media movement, which we saw all over multiple platforms yesterday, all over Instagram, all over Twitter, all over Facebook. The idea was for people who are not people of color to be quiet and leave that space open for non-white people to listen, to learn, to amplify black voices. This is something that our morning anchor Romney Smith talked about on What's New yesterday at 5 p.m. The idea did come with some problems, however. Not everyone realized the minimalist idea behind it. For starters, the idea was to post a black square with the hashtag Blackout Tuesday and no other words. Some other people did post things that had a lot of words, not necessarily leaving that space open for non-white people to amplify those voices. Now, everyone had the best of intentions, of course. We want to keep that in mind as we talk about this. but. There were definitely some misses. Some people posted the black square with the hashtag Black Lives Matter, for instance. Now that hashtag is used to encourage dialogue and instead that feed then got filled with multiple black squares when people realized this, myself included. I had posted it with the hashtag Black Lives Matter. You couldn't just delete the hashtag because the algorithm kept the post in that space. You had to fully delete the post and then post it again if you wanted to participate that. However, some thought leaders thought the entire idea of Blackout Tuesday in the way that it transpired on social media with the posting of the black squares totally missed the mark and actually suppressed social media on what was an election day in a lot of places. Some thought leaders called it performative, telling people that it might have been better for people just to simply mute themselves and not necessarily make a show of posting the black square. However, other thought leaders did appreciate the show of solidarity, which was a physical showing of people standing with the Black Lives Matter movement. So it, all of this wrapped up in a broader conversation of where we go from here, what action steps can be taken by allies who want to do better for non-white people who have been victims of racial injustice, police brutality, so on and so forth. We have more information about this on WKYC.com and we'll talk about some of those resources for allies at the end of this here. First, we'll get into some of the other things that are happening here in Northeast Ohio. Downtown Cleveland has extended its curfew through Friday, June 5th. That was announced yesterday by Mayor Frank Jackson. So the restricted area in Cleveland, which includes the central business district in downtown, as well as the municipal boundaries of City of Cleveland going to the West 25th Market District in Ohio City, those businesses are now open today as of 6 a.m. this morning. So from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., businesses in those areas will be open. That's today on Wednesday and also on Thursday because this is extended through Friday. It's through at least Friday morning at this time. It's not immediately clear right now whether that curfew will plan to be picked back up on Friday at 8 p.m. But at least through 6 a.m. Friday and then businesses are anticipated at this point to be open starting at 6 a.m. on Friday through at least 8 p.m. Now, there are exceptions to this. If you are a credentialed member of the media, of course, you already know that if you're a member of the media that's watching this right now. If you're a resident in one of those restricted areas, now keep in mind you will need to have proof of your residency with you if you plan to leave and return or if you're planning to return during those restricted times once the curfew kicks back in at 8 p.m. tonight. Also, if you live in one of the restricted areas, you are permitted to get food, to take your pet outside if you have a pet that needs to be taken outside or to go to a medical appointment. But businesses in these areas are encouraged to be closed during the curfew at this time and largely that's what we're seeing. So this is a change from the city's original order asking businesses to stay closed during the day. Now they will be able to be open today and tomorrow from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
while people are protesting, Dr. Amy Acton, our director of the Ohio Department of Health, she's asking that people do keep those physical distancing issues in mind. This is when she was asked about a potential increase in COVID-19 cases. This was during the press conference yesterday with Governor Mike DeWine. Governor Mike DeWine said that yes, the state of Ohio is definitely concerned about an increase in COVID-19 cases. So Dr. Acton did encourage people to keep practicing your First Amendment right, which is to express yourself, that freedom of speech, while protesting as safely as possible and protecting yourself and others from spreading COVID-19 coronavirus. Dr. Acton said yesterday that it'll be weeks before we know what kind of impact these demonstrations in the state of Ohio may have on those COVID-19 numbers. So of course, we'll be watching them very closely. She also applauded the people who have been out demonstrating who've been wearing masks. We've seen that in our coverage, lots of people wearing masks, some not, but many, many people wearing masks. That's not just here in Ohio. We've seen that nationally. If you've been paying attention to the national coverage about demonstrations, lots of people wearing masks in order to stop the spread of COVID-19. And Dr. Acton mentioned that about seeing all the pictures of people who have been trying to do so safely. Let's take a look at the COVID-19 numbers where they stand right now in the state of Ohio. We have these numbers in from 2 p.m. as of yesterday from the Ohio Department of Health. The total number of cases that we saw newly reported yesterday is down, but if we look at deaths, hospitalizations, and ICU admissions, each of those are up by one, the number one. Yes, so largely flat, up by one in those particular areas. So the total number of cases now, dating all the way back to March 9th, is now 36,350. These are both reported probable and testing positive cases based on that expanded CV CDC definition. So total number of cases, 36,350. Yesterday, the number of new reported cases was 366. That's down pretty significantly from Monday when we saw 471 new reported cases. The total number of deaths is now 2,258 dating back to March 9th when we first learned of COVID-19 being here in the state of Ohio. Yesterday, the number of new deaths reported was 52 new deaths reported. So that is up one from Monday when there were 51 new deaths reported. The total number of hospitalizations is now 6,176 with the new number of hospitalizations reported yesterday being 64, which is up one from Monday when 63 new hospitalizations were reported. In terms of ICU admissions, the total number of ICU admissions is now 1,583, with the total new number of ICU admissions reported yesterday being 14, which is up one from Monday when 13 new ICU admissions were reported. Taking a look at something that's happening on the national stage, our Governor Mike DeWine has said that Ohio would not be volunteering to host the Republican National Convention. This is as President Donald Trump announced that he's going to be forced to seek another state for the upcoming 2020 Republican National Convention. On Fox News, DeWine said that would not be something that we think that we would volunteer to do here in Ohio. This is consistent with comments that DeWine made last week saying that Ohio is not yet prepared for large mass gatherings. This is after President Donald Trump tweeted on Tuesday night that he was looking for a new host city because North Carolina's governor said he could not guarantee a full capacity convention due to ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus concerns. Here's what DeWine told Fox News. He said this, mass gatherings are just a real problem, particularly those that are inside. The virus is still here. We have flattened the curve. Our hospital admissions is something we look at every single day. These numbers are fairly flat but they're not going down. If you remember, Ohio did host the Republican National Convention in 2016 here in Cleveland. That was just four years ago. But as DeWine said with the state of affairs right now, that is just not something that the state of Ohio is interested in even considering at this point. Now, as we talked about at the beginning, ways that people can work to be better allies, we have a story on WKYC.com about resources to better understand racial injustices and disparities. Of course, the recent protests have people wanting to understand the Black Lives Matter movement more, how they can better understand race relations here in the country of Ohio. So Judy Hill, president of the Akron chapter of the NAACP, says part of that responsibility is on everyone to be proactive and search for that information. Although 
Hill understands it can be very overwhelming. There's a lot of information out there. It might be difficult for people to determine right away if this is a new area of study that you're diving into, what makes sense, what's going to be the right entry point for you. There are tons of articles, there are tons of podcasts, tons of movies, tons of books that definitely can be checked out. We've got a link to those resources on WKYC.com. I'm gonna talk about a few of them for you here right now. Hill also recommends, if you're a parent out there, to have age-appropriate conversations with your children about race. This is what Hill said. Talk about the issues. I don't think you have to go into details, but I think you also need to help them understand what's going on, and by doing it, you're using it as a teaching opportunity. Those were Hill's words there. So here are a couple articles that might be of interest if you would like to look into better understanding racial injustices and disparities across the country. One article is called Unpacking the White Knapsack. That is by Peggy McIntosh. There's another article called Who Gets to be Afraid in America? That's by Ibram X. Kendi. Now some movies that you might be interested in taking a look at are 13th, that's on Netflix. When They See Us, that is also on Netflix. Fruitville Station, Fruitvale Station, excuse me, Selma. And the movie Just Mercy, by the way, has just been made free on digital platforms through the month of June. So that's one that you may want to check out. And a few podcasts worth mentioning are Speak Out with Tim Wise, Co-Conspired Conversation, and The 1619 Project. That's from the New York Times. Now, I know I just gave you a lot of information in a short amount of time, but we do have all of that linked on WKYC.com, as well as a list of multiple books there that you may want to check out if you're interested in learning more about these topics and about our race relations here in the U.S. That's it for our early 3 News Now update for Wednesday, June 3rd. We'll be back here at 2 p.m. as soon as we get the most up-to-date numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio. And I will see you back there then. Everyone have a great rest of your morning. We'll see you in just a little bit. I'm Stephanie Haney.